This is Priscilla White from St Faith and St Lawrence Church in Harborn with worship for the 11th of October. This service has a harvest theme and over my shoulder you'll see uh, something in the background which is a representation of a horn of plenty which will become relevant later on in the service. If you're watching this um, via the website or Twitter or Facebook, there'll be a link nearby which you can use to download the order of service. <clears throat> but there will be subtitles appearing on the video in order to help you to follow things and to join in. As we begin, however, let's just take a moment of quiet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. So our opening response is. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. You soften the ground with showers, and bless the increase of it. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. The meadows are clothed with sheep. The valleys stand so thick with corn, they shout for joy and sing. The earth has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. Our first hymn here on the video worship is All Creatures of Our God and King.
our prayer of preparation. Lord, direct our thoughts, teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, Amen. And prayers of penitence. Let us forget, confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And as we celebrate harvest and our thankfulness to God, we give thanks to God, the God of all peoples of the earth. For the colour and forms of your creation and our place within it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For our daily food and those whose work and skill bring your good gifts to us, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the gifts and graces inspired in human minds and hearts, for insight and imagination, for the skills of research, we bring healing and fulfilment to the lives of many. We bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the light and shades of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability, for new life and growth out of barrenness and decay, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For new hope and strength in our communities, especially in your church and among all you call to serve you, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For all in whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience and humility, and all the fruit of the Spirit, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the life we have been given, and for all those whom you have given us to share it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. And so to the collect. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our readings. Two readings today are Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 7 to 18. And then from the New Testament, Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 30. As I usually do, I suggest at this point that you pause the video and read the readings either from the order of service or from your Bibles and spend a little bit of time thinking about them and reflecting on them. When you've done that to your satisfaction, then join in again with the video where we'll come to the reflection which I will lead. I mentioned at the beginning of the service the Hall of Plenty or Cornucopia, and this is one very rough that I made uh, to illustrate the idea. Cornucopia or Hall of Plenty is used as a symbol of harvest and can be seen on the front of the order of service for today if you've got hold of one. Often shown as a wicker basket in the form of a slightly deformed cone, it's filled with all the good things of the harvest which overflow from it in a depiction of abundance. One of the key themes of harvest is thankfulness to God for all the good things that we've been given. But alongside that are other themes and ideas 
which reminds us of the context and consequence of that graciousness and gift. So today I want to explore three themes and ideas to help us reflect on our harvest experience. So firstly, context. In the reading from Deuteronomy, a picture of a land of abundance is painted for the people. The promise as they left Egypt has all along been about God's provision of fertile land in which they could settle, about a change of context from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. The land of flowing streams contrasts with the wasteland, the arid place, infested with snakes and scorpions. Where they are now, in the arid place, is not where they will be, in the place of plenty. But the people of God are counseled to remember, when they do find that place of abundance, that their roots have been in pain and in suffering. The contrast is to remind them that all that abundance is gift. It's all grace. It's all from God. And they're not to forget from where their journey began. Now, our context today is one where we're living in extraordinarily difficult times. For some, there is real hardship, loss of income, jobs and security, a real fear of homelessness and hunger. Covid has brought pain and fear way beyond the disease itself, bad as that would be. Many live with fear and threat as constant companions. But Covid is not the only part of our context today. The report into the Church of England and Church in Wales from ICSA, the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse, paints a picture of a church which has been for some a wilderness, an arid place, in which they were unable to find rest or respite. Instead of a place of security and safety, it's been a place of fear. The church as a whole has not always either had the right processes and procedures or followed them correctly when it has had them. It's not always held the safety and security of survivors as the most important thing, but has sought to cover itself, to protect its reputation at the expense of the most vulnerable. The report makes for very hard reading, and the response the church will be called to make is going to have to be one of real repentance, redress and reconciliation. The promise given to the people of God that there was real possibility of change is a promise we need to hold on to now. We hold on to it both as people living through Covid era and as people who are part of a church that's learning to own up to its failures. The promise that we can look to is that it is possible for something new and different to happen. Ahead of us is possibility, but we need actively to get engage with it. So the second aspect is that of consequence. If we are those who've been gifted with much abundance, then we have a responsibility to use those gifts, not simply for our own benefit, but for the care of others. In the story Jesus tells, the rich man receives a huge harvest, a harvest which would not only have kept him in luxury, but well used, benefited his community as well. The foolishness of this particular rich man was to store all that goodness for himself alone, to build bigger storage facilities rather than to share the abundance with his neighbours. At the heart of who he was was a real selfishness. It's very easy to condemn him, but before we do so, we need to make sure that we're not repeating at least some of his mistakes. Do we hoard goods and wealth for a rainy day, and then fail to recognise that the point when the storms are overtaking others may be the moment to release some of our good fortune? One of the important things about harvest, as we celebrate it in the church, it's not simply being thankful for the good that we have, but sharing with others. Hence the commitment to the food bank. Trussell Trust food bank usage was already going up before the COVID crisis began. And they forecast this winter, they will be giving out six emergency food parcels a minute, which will be an increase of 61% over the previous year. If we have the wherewithal to help, then we have the responsibility to do so. We realise, of course, that not everyone can, but where we can, we are called to do so. If our pantry is full and we have no regard for the empty shelves of others, then our claim to be following the way of Jesus will sound pretty hollow. Likewise, when the church claims to share the love of Christ, but has left some of the most vulnerable members to suffer through the effects of abuse, 
its words sound like noisy gongs and clanging cymbals. We have to set our care for the vulnerable and for the needy, in whatever way, alongside the care that God shows us and shows for all creation. And so the third theme is that of celebration, drawing together our understanding both of the context in which we live, the care we need to show for others. Jesus tells us not to worry about our lives, our food and our clothing, because God cares for all creation. Jesus doesn't seem to be saying that we should have no concern at all for these things, but rather we should not be dominated by, nor strive for them. We should rather live our lives in a constant state of awareness of God's care, so that we can share abundance when we have it, and receive from others when we do not. One fun thing that I have done at Harvest is to make different words out of the letters of the word harvest. It's amazing how many of these words are in line with the idea of harvest itself, although you do have to be a bit careful because there are a couple of rude ones in there. Deeply embedded in the word harvest are the words share and heart. At harvest we're called to share, to consider and to care for all those in need, even, only, even if only in relatively small ways. So as we give thanks to God for the good, let's not build barns and barriers. We have open arms and hearts to share the abundance of God's love with others. Amen. In a moment, we will hear an anthem of a chorus in the Lord, I will be ever thankful. And as you listen to that, you might want to think of three things for which you are thankful today, particularly. Um, you might, in the future, want to use the order of service to build one of these. There's a template for it on the penultimate page. And as you do that, maybe then to build some little flowers or fruits or something to put in of those things for which you are thankful and have them as a harvest reminder. So I've built three things that I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my church, despite its weaknesses and its faults. And I'm thankful that I have a home and a place where I can lay my head. So let's listen. And let's be thankful.
So we come to our affirmation of faith, where we declare faith in God. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain. For with his blood, he purchases us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer, please again feel free to pause the video, either <coughs> to use your own resources for prayer, or to use the responses at the back of the order of so the points of prayer for the back of the order of service and responses in the order of service. When you've finished praying, then please join back in with the video as we come to the Lord's Prayer. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we come to the peace, we remember those with whom we are gathered, maybe at home or those of our church community and the wider church. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So point in a moment to reflect on our sharing of peace with others. And our hymn now, as we draw towards the close of the service, is Come Ye Thankful People Come.
closing responses. In thankfulness for all God's gifts to us, we go out to share God's bounty. In thankfulness for the presence of Christ, we go out to share God's love. In thankfulness for the Spirit, directing and empowering us, we go out to share God's story. And so may God, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the sky, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine, lead us, feed us, multiply us and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator through all eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.